Okay, let's uh, <laughs> let's try it again. Um, I think we finally got all the technical difficulties worked out. Uh, so just real quick, uh, let's talk about uh, just before we go back. Talk about Fibonacci. Look at this expanding pivot. I did want to point it out because anytime you've got things flying up and down like this, it's more or less a range, but it's really vicious on both sides, robbing everybody of their stops on each side. But when you get this kind of halfway action and then you come melting down, you really want to pay attention because if we do take out lows again without taking out highs, uh, sometimes this can turn into a really big reversal pattern. Okay, um, let's go back and talk about Fibonacci. Uh, we were doing it on this chart of the S&P, so let's go and look at these tops back here, back in 07. So the main thing is, if you were looking at the S&P back in 07, um, and you saw this price action here, trickling down and we take out these two lows uh, these two very significant swing lows then you might be thinking that hey this thing uh, could be in for at least a little break maybe turning around and where would you want to think about initiating a trade well I don't know that I would want to initiate a trade on the 382 in here I'm a little bit more picky in there but you know the good thing about Fibonacci is there's other traders trading it always there's one thing you can be guaranteed is that if there's a very significant and by significant I mean a decent leg that you can measure and draw easily on a chart uh, significant move someone's lots of traders have drawn on their Fibonacci and there's gonna be orders sitting at the 382 and there's gonna be orders sitting at the 618 there just are what's important is not necessarily that you want to be one of those traders but you want to investigate how the market trades when those traders orders are filled so let's take a quick look at that this is the first 382 retracement after this uh, significant down leg that took out a couple of those and if we look closely at the daily bars and we'll slide this over just a bit so we can see the touches the very first time we actually print the 382 it just barely gets dinged and then it goes ahead and uh, closes pretty significantly far away from it. That's a, that's a big difference between uh, it's a big up and down day actually because because the bar opened in here somewhere it went all the way up and then came all the way back down. So now you know you've probably got at least some Fibonacci guys in there uh, with short positions on. The next day is probably a little bit of a disappointment for them. It looks like that you know at some point during the day they came down, they're enjoying a nice profit, and then all we close all the way back up here. And now those guys are sweating bullets. Because they don't really want to get into the loss. They've already seen significant if they're still in the trade, they've seen significant profits turn in, into losses. And the big guys that are, that play Fibonacci and are smart know that too. So their job the next day is going to be to cause this to happen. And sure enough, they they drive it up through the 382, enough to scare anybody that was early and got in there, and shake them out, steal their stops, and then they sell it back the next day. Uh, and they're the ones with the profit instead of the guys that, instead of the uh, early Fibonacci explorers. So. That's what I mean by using Fibonacci as sort of a tool to uh, gauge uh, market action and how things are actually happening. This is, um, you know, things are going to slop around it. Uh, you, you don't want to get all bent out of shape uh, when, you know, you just barely miss an entry like some of these guys did. They probably just barely missed it. So some of them jumped back in sold it somewhere in here and then ended up getting stuck with a loss. That's why all these stops were up here and why we slopped through it the next day. But, did the 382 work? Yeah, absolutely. Of course it did. Uh, just don't need to get all bent out of shape when it goes goes through a, a level uh, just for a little bit. And we got another chance up here. They retested it uh, and it sold off nicely. Made a new low. 
Now, back here, not real happy when I see Fibonacci levels that have made fairly significant looking swings uh, come back up and uh, make um, another retest at a Fibonacci level. Because we already have, excuse me, let me quiet these boys down. All right, sorry about that. Um, the problem is, if if when we come back up here, guys have already had a chance to get short, and they've seen their trade go into profit, and now it's come all the way back into the loss. The stops are going to be here, and there's probably going to be at least as many stops as there are going to be significant new sell orders. Uh, and so it's I don't really like you know third touches of, uh, of Fibonacci levels, no matter how uh, how good and significant they look. This ended up getting a little sloppy. Uh, a lot of times things do when you're going into a major transition like this. You know, signif fairly significant swing highs, we take them out, uh, but then we start rolling back down again. And so you really had to be paying attention, especially when we start t taking out these little swings in here and working our way back down again. And that was all she wrote for that market. And well, we all know what happened in 08. Okay, so how else do we use Fibonacci? Well, always we're looking at these significant levels, and here after we made the bottom in 09, uh, and we had our first significant pullback, and I'm sure no, but not a lot of us were thinking pullback at that time. This was the flash crash back in 2010. Um, really huge, amazing, crazy days. Um, but the levels were there, and how they traded was very important, and if you kept your head... Um, then you learned a lot about how the market was going to behave and whether we were just going to roll back over again or uh, and keep going down for, with a continuation of the bear market from 08 or whether we were going to stabilize or not and keep going up. So a lot of this was happening during the time where, you know, okay, well, yay, the Fed's printing money. Now we're not really sure what they're going to do. And then... That's why we got all this sideways action. The reasons don't really matter. What do, what matters is the market's reaction to the news and, and what we were doing while we were waiting for news. Um, so we can measure. Let's clean this up a bit. And if we because if we watch me draw it in, it'll probably be more meaningful. All right, so you you don't have to measure the entire leg. You can measure uh, some of these smaller pullbacks. However, you want them to be fairly significant. Sorry about that. Um, we can measure these smaller pullbacks, and I think that this is one that's usually particularly important to measure because uh, this is the very first time we, we pull back after making a significant low and then really blasting off and having a change in behavior, changing the fact that we were able to take out a swing high even if just barely, uh, and then we, we blast off from that area. So it's possible that other traders are going to be looking at uh, that leg as significant as well. Now, of course, everybody's going to be looking at the big, the big boy. And what we like to see is this nice, Joe Napoli calls it a, a confluence area. It's a 382 of one leg and the 618 of another. And it works just like any other Fibonacci level. It's just that it adds more significance to it because uh, there's traders from multiple time frames, multiple legs, uh, looking at this level for multiple reasons. You know, we can also put in... Fibonacci extensions, and any time we have a quick thrust move like this, generally the very first move is the most uh, is the most significant one. And let's get rid of this. Um, 
smaller extension. The important one is the big one to one because everybody looks at them. Okay, so come down A, B, C, and the extension of that is from C down to here. And sure enough, that's where we see price reverse. Now, the important part isn't that, oh my gosh, it's the one-to-one, -one, I need to trade that every time. The important part is, what happened when the market got there? Usually, a lot of times, you're going to see a reversal, or at least some kind of significant bounce, because traders are in there taking profits, uh, then their trades are going to affect the market. Now, however, sometimes you're going to see things like this just snap and break, and if that happens, say we, instead of uh, just washing these lows out, which is what happened, and then turning around and coming right back up again, what if we had gone down and price had come down and done something like, what, like this, way down here? There's going to be, we knew there were going to be buyers here. Now, whether they affected the market or not is something that we have to just kind of sit back and watch. In this case, they did, but we're going to take the case of what if they didn't. So if price just slashed through this level, we know that there's a bunch of stuck traders in here that are looking to get out of break even. So on any kind of retrace back up into this area, that's a good idea for us to possibly think about being uh, sellers along with them uh, selling out to close their uh, their long position that was at a loss. So you're getting a, you should get a nice boost from that from those traders getting out of break even and they will give you a, a higher rate of success I believe. At least I see it over and over again. So, but that's not what happened. We got, uh, we hit this level and we bounced right back up. Uh, and then the next time we came back and touched these lows, uh, that was it. They, uh, they bought it back up. I think we had, you know, rumors or news of whenever Jackson Hole happened that Bernanke came out and said, yeah, we're printing more money. So we kept going up. Um, now kind of what I was in the vein of what I was talking about down here what if now that we know that the market is, is thinking about heading up what do we do with uh, uh, with our Fibonacci on the way back up again well what can it tell us about this market well okay so we know there are going to be some sellers in here whether they're taking profits or trying to uh, find some kind of reversal but we touch this one to this a very significant first ABC leg up after making new highs, and we just barely touch it and barely come back into this little bitty tiny coil. Then after after bouncing off of it once, we come right back through it again, and get a little support. We never we don't come back into the coil. In fact, the coil ends up being fairly nice little bitty tight range. Uh, that traders were ended up buying off of on any little bitty tiny tail down and then now after we passed the one-to-one -one, sure enough anybody that had sold was there with their hand out uh, to get reversed and to get long rather than uh, trying to fight this as, an, as a uh, uh, last chance to get short for, for some kind of big big down so those guys finally getting turned around in the market uh, to the long side uh, their evidence and their footprints are right there when you see this kind of action. They test it, they get, they get fills them, they gets them short, they come back in, it comes right through their position, and if they didn't just, you know, get out at, at a loss up here, then the guys that, that were able to hold on were definitely looking to get out of their trade uh, as close to break even as possible, and that's what this is. And sure enough, it's, it was uh, more or less straight up from there, except for this last pullback off of this next Fibonacci leg. So that's that's how I like to look at Fibonacci. I like to read what price does off of it rather than just throwing orders right in front of it. Um, and then I look for a way in. Uh, it keeps my head on the right side of things. 
Uh, let's see, was there something else we wanted to talk about? That is the nuts and bolts of what I what I usually look at, and, and uh, I think that makes a fairly concise recording, I hope. Uh, I'll post that one up. Anybody that's wandered in here have any questions, feel free to post them up. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and uh, break the recording here so that we can... Uh, we can get it posted up for everybody else to see later. Okay, uh, we'll shut it down there. Thanks for watching.